Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. This is some footage from the Madrid Masters, my friend Carl Adrian, who's been in a number of my videos. Great coach, great guy. He actually joined the Roman Safiulin as his coach for this event. Roman had a great event as well and managed to get to the third round after qualifying. And here's some footage that Carl managed to take from pretty good seats. Uh, here's Alcaraz in full flight. Uh, one of the most exciting players, obviously, on the tour. Let me know in the comments what you think about watching him, but it's it's just like ultra explosive tennis. And there's been debate whether he uses uh, stock specs or uh, lots of customizations to his rackets. From everything I've heard from people who know him, uh, it's uh, close to a stock racket or in terms of swing weight and everything. So I've said that now a number of times, but I, I persist with that. Here we have Diego Schwartzman. Uh, he plays with an extended frame, 28 inches. It's an old IG Radical MP. And the extra length can help you if you're a shorter player. He's going to get a bit higher reach on the serve, a bit more pop. Obviously, to swing a 28-inch racket is not the easiest. But uh, he does it well. Uh, he hasn't had the best year or the best maybe two years now. So let's hope Pekwe can get back into good form. But I always enjoy watching him play. Obviously, it's not easy when you're quite significantly shorter than most of the other players on the ATP Tour. It's quite a, a like NBA-style height thing these days and uh, it's nice to see the shorter players. Here's Cameron Nori, one of those I would say maximizers, he really maximizes his talent and is very very difficult to beat for anyone. Stan the Man, one of my favorite players and uh, his racket if you're curious, if you want to know the specs, I have recently made a video about his personal frame that we have in the office. Kono Sitsipas training with his father, he's been back and forth with string choice for his I think K-Blade, that's a Blade 98 Pro stock. Here we have Andy Murray, back to his PT57A. I think Lendl was behind that. Andy has been playing pretty well, I must say. I mean, he's been rising back into the rankings again, higher up in the rankings. But the clay court season has not been particularly kind to him. Maybe not his body either, so he's now saving himself for the grass court season. I think that is a logical choice. Here we have Taylor Fritz with a, with a very low spec, actually. He plays like 320 grams strong and with a swing weight around 327, 328 for his IG Radical MP, so the same mold as Diego Schwartzman, uh, but he still generates lots of pace, and you can see how good his technique is. It's just amazing whip on his forehand and so on. So some pros will play with, with pretty human specs. Uh, Tiafo is another player who doesn't play ultra heavy with his V-Core Pro 97. He, he plays pretty humane. I think he's using the Dual G version still, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, he used to skip the 1620 used to skip one string to make it 1619. I'm not sure if he's made a switch to a more recent V-Core Pro model where they have a 1619 pattern naturally. Uh, but also a fun guy to watch, always a smile on his face and uh, lots of um, playfulness on the court. Coco Golf uh, with what looks like a head boom, but it's actually a speed racket, so it's painted to be a head boom. Uh, same happened to Lorenzo Musetti. He played with the Extreme Tour, then tried the boom, uh, but still plays with the boom in paint, but actually uses the Extreme Tour still. And so it depends what kind of racket they want them to endorse. Here we have Kasper Ruud with his extended DR100. So it's a DR100 Plus from Yonex, obviously one of the, the most dangerous clay quarters out there. He had a little bit of a struggle at the early period of this season, but then now he seems to be back in good shape. Alcaraz is going like a train. Obviously, he won Madrid and uh, then he lost in the first round to Marochan in the Italian Open in Rome. And Marochan played an amazing match. I don't think that Alcaraz was injured or anything, but there are some concerns about his, his arm, especially I think he has some arthritis in his wrist from what I've heard. And you've seen him strapped with the elbow as well. And the way he puts his body through the pace is always He's such a physical player. I think my main worry about his career would be, uh, you know, from a physical standpoint, whether he would get injured or anything. From a tennis perspective, he, he seems just almost indestructible and he seems to be getting better and better, getting returns in place, getting better at serving overall, and he's using the drop shot to maximum efficiency. And yeah, here he got the win done in this match and he did win the whole event. As I said, here was against Rusovori. But uh, yeah, great event, some great captures here from Carl Adrian. I uh, always appreciate having some footage. So if you have taken some interesting footage at a tournament that you want me to comment on or you want me to share on the channel, please feel free. Here's Dominic. I think Dominic is uh, back in some kind of form similar to his old one. 
uh, before he, he struggled for a long time to to get you know confidence with his wrist and everything after his injury but now he seems to be back in good shape and it's nice to see Domi play well again he can really you know pummel that ball really strikes the ball so well as you know uh, and we have Tiafo here and he's pretty interesting uh, serve technique. I mean, all the, the pros, they have the fundamentals down to a T, but they definitely have different styles and, and it might look unorthodox even with Medvedev and guys like Tiafo. They, it doesn't look super natural, but follows the, the kind of um, fundamentals of tennis, obviously, because otherwise they couldn't play on this level. It's nice to have different styles in tennis. That's all for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.